see. Yeah. OK, so now the recording is on. All right. Thank you guys. Thanks for joining us in this platform convergence series, which is focused on the platform convergence features of Dynamics 365 application. We appreciate you joining us uh, during weekends and taking out time from your busy schedule. Uh, as a part of this series, uh, what we are going to do is I'll just move on to the next slide. Uh, yeah, so just a quick disclaimer that the views expressed in these sessions are purely based on the speakers experience and their willingness to share with the community. Uh, these are not the views of their employers or Microsoft and in order to run these workshops, we are using trial environments. We are not using any real time customers environment for these sessions. So this series of platform convergence sessions is basically driven by collaboration of three user groups. ANZ D365 FinOps team, which is based in Australia and New Zealand. D365 UG India, which is focused for Dynamics professionals in India and Pakistan user group, which is a platform for Dynamics 365 professionals in Pakistan. Now these three different user groups, they have same vision, uh, basically to give a platform for Dynamics 365 community to come together, learn together and grow together. They are based in different regions just to cover the audience in that in that right time zone. But this series uh, was uh, covering a, a topic which is upcoming and a lot of interest is there in this uh, uh, particular area. So we planned it at this time so that we can cover audience from uh, multiple geographies. So uh, thanks to all the volunteers of these three user groups who have been working really hard from last couple of weeks and months. I know that to bring this uh, session series to this stage where we are. So we will continue from here. Uh, what we see is uh, the sessions plan and our speaker board. So we are doing these sessions every Saturday starting from this weekend and they will be at the same time 3.30 p.m. in Melbourne. Uh, keep in mind that daylight saving is about to kick in. So after two weeks, uh, there might be a time zone difference uh, of one hour uh, for people who are joining from uh, other parts of the world. Uh, so we are going to do five sessions which will cover a uh, variety of topics from different uh, just to cover the whole platform convergence. We start with introduction to Dataverse. So that is the session happening today and it's going to serve as the baseline for the upcoming sessions. So it's really important for people who don't know what Dataverse is that this is the, the right session to be in to understand about it. Then in second session, we will be talking about the platform convergence roadmap, which where we will have people from Microsoft, Tim Shaw, uh, to share with us the uh, roadmap of platform convergence from Microsoft perspective. Third session will be on uh, the new upcoming features about business events in Dataverse, where we will have Cameron Robinson from WellRada who will talk about these features. Fourth session, we will be running on dual right and virtual entities, which will be led by Fazel. And the last session will be on uh, data integrator and logic app, which is uh, driven by Priyanka Garg and Mohammad Mustajab. Um, so th this is our uh, speaker board. Uh, so we really appreciate all these speakers who have taken out time from their busy office work and they are working together towards the preparation of these sessions. So a big round of applause for all these speakers who have been working hard. All right. Um, so agenda for today, what we are trying to do is we will understand what is platform convergence. We will start with a baseline understanding of what it means. Then we will go into understanding what Dataverse is how to navigate in Dataverse, how we can create new tables, how we can create a model driven app, and then we will summarize and do a Q&A. So if you are from finance and operations background and you have been hearing this word Dataverse, common data model, and bringing finance and operations closer to CE, all those things are getting covered here. Uh, so Preeti will be giving us a demonstration. She's a uh, CE technical expert and she will be giving us those demos. A uh, quick introduction about your speakers. So I'll hand it over to Preeti to introduce herself to the uh, audiences. Over to you, Preeti. Thank you, Rajay. Uh, so my name is Preeti, uh, and I work as a uh, Dynamics 365C Senior Technical Consultant in Vilrada. Um, I started my career around 10 years ago uh, with Accenture India. I joined Accenture as fresher and got a chance to work in Microsoft technology. I start, started my career working in uh, .NET and then gradually after a few years, after two, three years of my career, I got a chance to be a part of Dynamics Space. 
um and then like four years before just we migrated to australia from india and here i got uh, various opportunities to work with different customers um where i have implemented the dynamics 365c uh, system from scratch and uh, upgraded their existing system for for most of the customers that's um pretty much it on my pers- uh, professional front um on my personal front, I'm a mother of super active three year old who helps me a lot in keeping myself healthy and active because I have to run behind him and day and night. Um, also, um, I love to do small, small things to keep my body and mind healthy, just a little bit exercise and yoga. Um, other than that, I just believe in, uh, you know, I strongly believe in the philosophy that we all are not only the human beings, but the spiritual beings on the human journey. So I just keep myself busy in my free time uh, just to explore myself so that I can be a better version of myself every day. And I consider that as a success, a real success for me. That's me. Thank you, Rajiv. Over to you. Thanks, Preeti. Uh, That was a wonderful uh, description about yourself. And uh, we will like to learn more about your spiritual journey, maybe in a separate session. Okay, guys, a bit about myself. I am working in the field of Dynamics 365 Finance and Operations, previously known as Dynamics Exepta from the year 2005. Started with my journey as a X++ developer and I still write code. I love X++. I am a community enthusiast, uh, also a Microsoft certified trainer, and I'm currently working with PwC based in uh, Melbourne, Australia. Cool, so let's continue. So we'll first talk about what is platform convergence, what this term means, what is platform convergence. So I'll just take a a five minutes here to bring my thought to the table that Dynamics 365 has evolved over last few years. And the way Microsoft has rebranded all the licensing thing, the marketing strategy, and even the way Microsoft has uh, refined the products to bring a common uh, offering to the customers, which says, okay, hey, we are offering you Microsoft Dynamics 365, which is a collection of various business applications. Now, when we say Dynamics, Microsoft Dynamics 365 is a collection of various business application, it means that your customers may be using finance and operations, which is a part of Dynamics 365 family, as well as they might be using Dynamics 365 customer engagement or they might be using Dynamics 365 field service, or they might be using Dynamics 365 project operations. And what has happened in recent time is we are witnessing that a lot of customers are actually using multiple applications from Dynamics 365 stack to run their business operations. As a result, what is happening is data is being created in all of these applications, and it is a challenge to bring FNO data closer to all other applications because all other applications like CE, uh, project operations, field service, they are built on top of Dataverse. Their data resides in Dataverse. But for finance and operations, the database is a SQL Azure database, which does not reside in Dataverse. And that is one of the barrier for finance and operations to leverage what is there in Dataverse and to leverage the power of components or the power platform components which are built around Dataverse. And that is the reason Microsoft is building these new features, which is trying to build finance and operation closer to Dataverse. So if the arrows are indicating that we are trying to bring finance and operation closer to Dataverse, and this is platform convergence. Now, when we talk about platform convergence, it does not only mean that we are bringing the data at one place. We are also talking about user experience and user interfaces. So if you are in finance and operations, uh, you might have seen that we can embed power apps in finance and operations UI through personalization. There are also new features coming up wherein you will be able to embed model driven apps within finance and operations, or you will be able to embed finance and operation pages into a UCI app outside finance and operation. So that means that the users who are working on Dynamics 365, they do not have to worry about switching their browser or moving from one application to another application. 
and that is all the benefit which comes through the platform convergence we have a detailed session on platform convergence roadmap which is session number 2 which will happen next week where tim shaw from microsoft will talk more about it but i hope this gives you an idea of what is meant by platform convergence so move forward now in order to enable this uh, you know platform collaboration and bringing finance and operations closer to data worlds the tools which are available to us are listed on the screen so we have tools like tool right data integrator virtual entities business events and ui experiences where you can embed apps so these are the tools which are bringing finance and operation closer to data worlds we have detail session on each of these topics coming up so uh, you can join those sessions to learn more about a particular topic but these all tools they can coexist if you are using virtual entities you can still use tool right and you can still use business event so it's not that you have to choose any one thing you can uh, these all platforms can coexist in one application or in in one uh, you know system uh and that's this i mean these tools are because finance and operation genes are very different to other dynamics 365 application and that is the reason these tools are built to bridge the gap we cannot just convert finance and operations into uh, into a dataverse uh, driven app so that is the reason these tools are coming in and microsoft has been investing a lot in improving these uh, platforms based on the feedback they have received from the customers so if you have uh, implemented dual right or virtual entity or business events i believe there are a lot of programs which microsoft is running where you can give them feedback and talk about their scenarios and uh, so that microsoft can improve on these tools so with this understanding we know what is platform convergence and we know what is uh, what type of tools are available let's understand what is dataverse so when we talk about dataverse as the name says data it has data in it and we we start with data so if you have to talk to dataverse and if you have to explain someone about what is dataverse always start with data first and because data is the key and the blood of any organization nowadays if your data is managed if your data is in the right shape your business operations will be smooth and in order to do that what we have tried to explain here is what different type of data can exist in any organizations so if you see there is a data which is called master data master data is a type of data which you refer to for example all your customers all your vendors your product catalog these are your master data and then there is a transactional data which transactional data is generated when you do your business operations so if you are dealing with your customers if you are doing some warehouse operations you are generating a lot of transactional data as your business is operating now this data when being generated in various applications needs to be integrated to get a real time view it needs to be consolidated to get a final end of the day uh, reporting for example and then you have to analyze on it so this is what generally happens with data in any organization and the applications we generate these data can be your back office applications or your front office applications so when you say back office applications these can be on cloud or on prem you can have your own travel management system or employee payroll system or your own um, uh i would say inventory management system and your customer facing applications are your for example web portals which you have exposed to your customers where they can log in and raise an order and pay their invoice or these could be websites for your e-commerce these could be call centers where your customers can call and place an order you can also use uh, bots where your customers can interact and raise a service request or they can even do a Uh, return order uh, processes so all these different type of applications are managed by you as an organization these could be dynamics or non dynamics applications and there are some applications which are not managed by you but they are still generating data for your company uh, so some of the example is like research institutes uh, and the social media twitter for example where people are talking about your company your products your services and some publication houses and it's very important for companies to know that what the world is talking about them so here we see that data is being data is everywhere it's generated by multiple sources and it's very important to have the right view of the data uh, of where your organization is 
So with that understanding, uh, the typical challenges with, which come with management of data is it's spread across application. You can have on cloud, dynamics, non-dynamics, on-prem, uh, and then the consolidation and real-time analytics on that data. And then to, to make a decision based on that data is, is a real pain. So we know what is data, we know what are the challenges. So how Dataverse solves, it, solves this challenge and where it fits into the equation is, Dataverse is considered to be heart of Power Platform. And Dataverse provides you a connector-based ecosystem using which you can bring data in Dataverse from your Dynamics or non-Dynamics or Cloud or on-prem system. So Dataverse allows you to bring data into Dataverse using connectors. If there is, if these are internal applications which are dynamics based, there are things where features like virtual entities where you don't actually have to copy the data because sometimes it doesn't make sense to copy all the data from one application to another. But Dataverse give you, gives you that capability that once the data is in Dataverse, now you can leverage the uh, surrounding Power Platform tools like building an app on top of your data or creating a Power BI report on top of that data. So this is how Dataverse brings that power of Power Platform to your data, which was created by external systems. Um, so don't, don't try to go too deep, but yeah, this is just an introduction. And I hope that explains uh, the benefit of having Dataverse because once the data is in Dataverse, you can build, start building apps without uh, investing too much time on You can start feeding them into data uh, into Power BI to build your reports. Uh, what's inside the box? So what happens is I, I took this reference of this slide from one of the recent show where uh, Ryan Jones came to Reza Durrani's uh, introduction to Dataverse uh, show, and he showed this. It's really intuitive, nice slide, where he talks about the Dataverse, what it looks from outside is just an API. So for example, if you are trying to build a Power App on top of the data, which is in Dataverse, you, you are actually uh, talking it through an API, but under that lies a, a heap of Azure platform offering. And this is all managed by Microsoft. So we don't have to worry about managing the elasticity or the security of the data within the Dataverse. Of course, there are scenarios where if you want to do something specific with your data, you can dive deep. But if you look uh, all the different features ranging from security, from building your business logic, from uh, analyzing the data using different techniques like data validations and modeling. This is where you can do AI Builder. Then the storage is managed by Microsoft. So different type of data may need different type of storage uh, needs and you, we don't have to worry about it. So the way you store your files versus the way you store your images versus the way you store your static data, it all gets stored in variety of different structures under the hood without you being worried without you have to define that. And then you, you get all the integration capabilities with Dataverse. So uh, that is about the structure. You know, it's not a technical deep dive, but I hope it gives you an idea of what Dataverse is, and you can talk about it now. <laughs> uh, so if, if we look, go by definition from Microsoft, Dataverse is a platform. It's a data platform. It's not a database. It's some people call it database plus plus because it offers you more than database. It offers you uh, that, it, so some, I mean, you can call it as a data database as a service. So it easily structures variety of data. So that's where the flavor comes in of your data, variety of data, and it gives you capability to build your business logic on top of it to support interconnected applications. So this definition has very deep meaning. You can bring data from multiple interconnected applications in a secure and compliant manner and Dataverse allows you to build all this uh, business logic on top of it. So uh, just the final words around Dataverse. Why work with Dataverse? Because Dataverse has the power for your business users and your IT team to quickly start building these type of capabilities around it, right? So you can do reporting, you can do compliance, you can do analytics very quickly, very efficiently once the data is in Dataverse. So that was around why Dataverse, what is Dataverse, and around the theory of it. Uh, I will now hand it over to Preeti to actually show us some real action on Dataverse. But before that, do we have any questions? Is there anything or any feedback on this so far? 
there is a question from Debashish Ray. What is significantly different in Dataverse from SQL DB that FNO uses? So the significant difference is that uh, if you go back here, that Dataverse gives you the platform to start leveraging the Power Platform tools around it. So if your data, for example, currently finance and operation data is in SQL DB, it's not exposed via any API uh, unless we talk about finance and operations DMF platform. But if you go back and see this whole power, you, you get to do on that data. And the way Microsoft is building these tools like dual right virtual entities, they are, they are there to bring your finance and operation data in Dataverse so that you can start playing around or start using these tools. So I hope that answers. Uh, thank you. So yeah, there's no other question. So I will now hand it over to Preeti. Preeti, over to you. Show us some magic. Thanks, Rachel. Um, it was a great overview on Dataverse. So I hope uh, each one of us at least got the gist of the Dataverse, like what actually Dataverse is and how um, it is connected, uh, how it fits in context of FinOps. Uh, now let's take one step forward to see like how um, like how actually Dataverse portal looks like and how we can build the a very uh, you know basic components in the Dataverse and how we can uh, access those using the Power Apps. So I'll be sharing my screen. Just let me know like if you can see it. Sure. Yeah, we can see the PPT. No, I think you are sharing the wrong screen. Um, Is this, can you see that now? So we see your, uh, uh, the oh, PowerPoint slide where you can move things around. Not the full screen one. So just on project top, there's an option called display settings. Click on that one, please. Uh, on the top on the top sec top left display settings and yeah. and click onto the switch the monitors maybe yep all good now we can see the full screen yeah okay uh is it okay now uh no, pretty. Are you using two monitors or one monitor? Yeah, I'm using two monitors actually. Uh, let me just. So you might need to share your second monitor when you are trying to share. I'll just take that out one minute. Okay, so can you yeah. see that now? Okay. Yeah. So um, I'll go to the environment directly. Uh, so to access the data was, uh, we just have to type make.powerapps.com in your uh, browser. So where you can directly uh, see the uh, um, the data was portal. You have to log in with your uh, domain user, and if you have the uh, appropriate security roles, just like if you are system admin or if you have the access for that particular portal, you will be navigated to this uh, home page. Uh, so this is how the data was looks like, which we have created a trial version for this demo uh, for this lab or demo, we can say. So uh, on right hand side, if you will see um, on top right, you can see the environments which are uh, which are created in your data was. So um, when you create a new trial, um, so it comes up with a default uh, environment here. But uh, and but you can set up your uh, sandbox if you want, like you want for dev environment for UAT, and if if you need some something separate environment for your set or test. So you can set up your sandbox environments and um, there is one production environment uh, which uh, is available for all the um, all your data was um, 
for um, account i would say uh, for it comes up for uh, the each data was so here um, under the next one gives you the settings where you can see your personal settings uh, or you can change uh, the look and feel of your environments just like the themes and all if you click on those so it will give you uh, ability to change and apply the different themes on your environment and also by accessing these hyperlinks you can go to your admin center and where you can see your actual environments and your users related to those environments uh, and um, the advanced settings gives you some uh, settings which you can um, this is more more related to Dynamics 365 CE, where you can do your personal uh, system, where you can up set your system settings just like your formats, and uh, there are various different type of settings which we can uh, set uh, on our uh, CE. Um, and uh, if I'll just come to the the left side of uh, this portal, we can see uh, the second tab, which gives you the where Microsoft has provided the guided information uh, to uh, learn to because these are our new things to how to create the apps. The and um, and you can just ro uh, explore this uh, to see how the apps can be created in the system. The uh, the next tabs uh, gives you the list of all the apps which are already implemented in your uh, which are available in in your environment so uh, here you can uh, see and click on this ellipsis and can play your each app which you want to access the next option is to create the uh the apps from the scratch there is one more option we can see you can create the apps from top here as well uh, but this is a different view where you can create your canvas app model driven app and the portal uh, from blank so we will be discussing each one of them in brief uh, later on during the session uh, this tab gives you the information of the data words, which like the data words out of the box, how it comes uh, originally by default. So it gives you the information of all the tables which Microsoft provides you as part of data words uh, um, um, by default, which we say out of the box. So these all are the tables which comes with the system, uh, like accounts, contact, address, appointments. Um, so here you can see all those tables listed. And these different columns uh, shows you uh, the um, detail of the each table, just like this is a table display name and this, the schema name of the table and what table it is. Standard means this is out of the box. Um, and uh, the next one is uh, choices. Uh, choices are nothing but the option set. Uh, we can say the drop down list. These are also the list of the choices or the option sets which Microsoft provides uh, and which comes with the system, which is in the box. Um, all other uh, areas which you can see the data flows, connections, we can see the, um, all the list of all the connections, data flows, what are available in the system, or we can create uh, under each one of them. As this is an overview of, um, session, so we'll not go in much details. We'll quickly just run through what actually comes here uh, with the uh, within the system and which it's, which is actually of our use in, in this session. So I'll just quickly uh, go a uh, deep dive into the table in detail uh, um, so that we can see like what actually uh, includes in the table. So let's say we have account table. So here you can see all uh, the components which a, a table uh, includes. So uh, these are the listed columns where we can uh, see the name of the each name of each field or a column and the schema name of that column. This third column defines the uh, data type. So we have different uh, type of data types available in Dataverse. So uh, just like uh, the unique identifier, text, choice, which is like your drop down list, multi te multi line text which uh, gives uh, you ability to enter uh, or like the paragraph in the field. Um, uh, we will be covering all these during the demo and we'll create one sample table. So I'll go in detail that time. Uh, the next tab uh, is the relationships, which defines or give you the gives you the list of 
the different type of relationships uh, for that particular table, just like one is to n, n is to one, n, n is to n. So all those relationships are defined here. Business uh, rules are the rules, uh, business rules uh, we can define to uh, set up the validation on the table. So just like if you if you want to define any any validation on your table, just like the start date and end date, a very simple example where you want to set like end date cannot be greater than start date. So you can uh, define that business rule here. So there is no code required to do such simple validations where or you want to set default values or uh, you want to just display an error message based on some condition. So all those things can be done without any code uh, here and you can define your validation rules. So earlier in the uh, old era, it was done by the JavaScript and also in Microsoft had introduced uh, business rules, um, uh, which is like no code, low code access. Uh, the next one is views. So here we can define the different type of views for that table uh, just for the good user experience. Uh, for example, if you are considering your account as a customer and account as a supplier. So we have identification, let's say, for that particular account and user wants to see a different views on on the application. Like I just want to list out only my customers uh, or the suppliers so we can create different views for different um, conditions. The next step is forms where you can uh, define the different type of forms for the table. So uh, Dataverse comes up with, like it defines four types of forms. Uh, your main form where you can have your detailed, uh, uh, where you can uh, configure your detailed form to take, to capture uh, the data. Uh, the quick create form is a type of form where you can just, um, we can just have the very minimal information. We, we can just, create a record with the minimal information we can say. So just like if we want to create uh, an account with the basic information, like what's the name and what's the ABN. So we can just keep two fields there on the quick create and it gives you ability to quickly capture the data and create a record. And later on, uh, um, uh, you can go and can fill the details in. Quick view forms are there where uh, we can set up small, small views of the form, just like, um, uh, and we can utilize those quick views on the different tables and um, different tables on the different forms. Uh, just like, for example, um, I am uh, just like as a, on a contact contact table. If I create a quick view form uh, saying this is a contact name, this is a number, this is an email ID, and I can use that view on the account saying if my contact is linked with that account uh, and as a primary contact so I can show the basic information on the account. So quick view forms are always the read only forms, but it gives you the detailed information. Uh, these are the couple of different type of forms which Dataverse provides us. So the dashboards and the charts are similar thing which we can create uh, for the particular table to uh, show uh, the graphical representation of the data for that table. Um, the keys defines uh, the whenever we do like any integration with third party or just like for example with dual right if there is an integration between uh, the dataverse and the finops so it creates the keys between the tables so those are defined here um, and uh, the data we can see whatever data is available in the system uh, for that uh, for that particular table uh, that's it on the table side uh, if i just go below here we can see the flows so i think most of the audience with is and uh, they are um, familiar with the cloud flows so uh, and the power automate so those if we create any for uh, the environment so they can be created here and can be listed under under the flows um, the last thing I want to cover here is uh, the solution, uh, which plays a very vital role in Dynamics 365 uh, data space uh, because um, 
it is recommended by Microsoft and it's a good practice always whenever we start a development on uh, the data wars, uh, it's recommended to create a new solution where you can have all your components which you are implementing or customizing the existing one. So have all the components in one solution, so which is easy uh, for the deployment and the maintenance purposes. So that's we can say uh, that's where the proper mechanism for ALM. Uh, for application life uh, life cycle uh, life cycle management so which uh, so we can have all the components which we are developing um, for that particular sprint or for that particular customer and and it would be uh, we can take that solution we can just simply export that solution and import it into the upper environments so that's a good practice to uh, uh, to do all the work in the solution. So we'll see that once uh, we will enter uh, the actual demo part. Uh, I'll come back to my slide. So here we will be creating um, the uh, table uh, and sim simple data types we will use in that table and uh, we'll create few of the relationships. We'll create, we'll try to create if time permits us, we'll try to create different views and we'll see how we can import the data. Uh, in in one of the table. So before I start the actual demo of the data wars, uh, is I just want to pause here and want to ask if there is any question. Yeah, thanks for that, uh, Preeti. So guys, do we have any questions so far around the uh, navigation on data wars? I don't see much in the chat window. We were just doing uh, some chat from finance and operation perspective. But if there is any question, feel free to unmute yourself and we can take that. I know it's not a question, Rajit, uh, but I think so. There are so many people, like 80, 70 percent people are joining from the FinOps background. So it will be a little bit of a good idea if you can explain. The, I really appreciate you are putting a, a, a complete description into a chat window about what is form view and how the finance and operations we have different. We have a different perspective in finance and operations. So it, is this something like you can describe right now, or you are going to show this as a later in the uh, presentation? Yes. Yeah, so, uh, so the reason I was putting these messages in the, in the chat window is that the development experience is very different for finance and operations and data work. So I think uh, I will let uh, Preeti continue with creation of tables and creation of a uh, sample app because that's where she will cover how we create table in data works and how we define relationship and how we create a design of the form. And I think these things, these dots will connect at that point. So we will let uh, I think Preeti continue on that. Perfect. Thank okay. You. Yeah, great going Preeti. We have a lot of applauses for you. Yeah, so a lot of appreciation coming in. So keep going. Thank you. OK, thanks. Thanks, everyone. Um, so this is the um, ER uh, uh, the data model which we are targeting today in our today uh, session. So it's a very simple one where we will be creating, uh, you can say, dynamic slab cruise management system. <laughs> so we uh, I'm going to create one um, cruise table, the simple table where I'll just uh, keep the name or the ID uh, for the cruise and the passenger I will consider the out of the box table contacts which comes with Dataverse, but we will see how we can uh, rename uh, the out of the box table uh, and we can show how it is visible in the model driven app. The main table which I'll be creating that will be reservation where I uh, will try to cover uh, most of the data types which we uh, which we just have gone through and we'll see how we create those and how they create a relationship bit, uh, relations between the tables and uh, I'll also be covering few of the important bits of the data or data was types just like the calculated field and the roll up fields. I'll give a light on those as well. So let's continue with our actual demo. OK, so as I've already uh, uh, explained, like what's the significance of uh, having a solution in the system? So I'll start with that. I'll start creating, first of all, the solution, which is nothing but the collection of the components of the data was. So I'll name it as Dynamics Lab Demo. Um, 
so as you have seen, uh, as soon as I start typing, typing my name, uh, system automatically creates the schema name of it. And here, the, um, that's a um, very important field of uh, the data was we have to define the publisher. So it defines like who is implementing and doing this customization for this particular customer or for this demo. So I will, I will, uh, we can create a new publisher for this one. I'll say Dynamics Lab, and we can define. And we can define the prefix for that. Otherwise, if it will not be, um, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll come to that point again. So then I'll create the prefix as DLB. If we will not be setting up the publisher and we do our implementation in the default solution, so it always uh, creates the components starting with prefix new, so which we don't uh, recommend. So now uh, whatever will go in this solution, it will have the prefix with DLB, which will uh, which defines difference between the what customizations you have brought in the system uh, against the default one. Uh, so once everything is done, uh, we can so I have to just set my publisher and I can say create the solution. So once my solution is ready uh, on the on the top, you can see one ribbon and uh, on the right side, we can see all. So this is uh, the all and new defines the similar kind of things. So new also gives you the list of the various components which are available in the dataverse, which we can create here. And all also gives the same uh, uh, the list where we can access the different different components in the different categories. These are all the categories of the components of the dataverse. So I'll start with the, um, if I select this uh, category table, so I, I'm in the tab tables category. So now here you can create new table or add existing tables, or we'll be dealing with tables only in this solution. So I'll create a new uh, table now, which, which we have seen in our slide, name as clues. So um, here a uh, table, it asks for the plural, plural name of the table, which it automatically takes if the system has it. Otherwise, you can just, if system does not auto-populate it, we, sometimes we have to give this name. Uh, if you can see, the schema name comes up with like DLB crews. So this will be our table schema name. Uh, there are various settings of the table defined here, uh, which uh, we can cover in some other session because they are very uh, detailed one. Uh, but there is um, the main, uh, which we can see on the top, this is uh, the one flag which defines if you want to include the notes and the activities on that table or not. So if you want to include uh, the notes and the timeline on the screen, uh, we can have it. Otherwise, uh, we can just skip this and can create the table because cruise is a very simple table. So I'm, I have not included the attachments notes on that table. So uh, once we create the table, it gives you the, it auto populates uh, the list of, or gives you the list of all the uh, fields and the all other components which Dataverse provides. So these are all out of the box. Now, if you want to create any new field, we can create, but uh, because Cruise is a simple table, so I'll just use the name of uh, a name field there. So I, I am done with this table. So we can say my Cruise table is done and I'll just move to the next table. So I'll just click on the Dynamics Lab demo and I will create a the main table which where we will create different type of data types. So I will say the new table name is reservation. Okay, and here I'll say, okay, and let me enable the attachments and the notes so that I can see the timeline on my table. Uh, and here are different options. Uh, I will just discuss one of them where it will, where I'll say enable quick create form. I'll show you uh, this, uh, the importance of it when we will come to uh, the model driven app. And I'll say, okay, create this table. Okay. So it takes a while uh, before it creates the full table and all other components in the background. Okay, 
here we go so now uh, we already have uh, the name field there so which allows you to enter the name of or gives you the field where you can enter the name of that record so here our plan is to have the reservation id which uh, where i'm just utilizing you can create a new field as well but i'm utilizing my name field as a auto number so i can change the data type from text to auto number so what it will do is as soon as i create my um record it will give the auto number to that particular record so you can set like how your auto number should look like so you can give the prefix prefix field like dynamics lab cruise management reservation and so dlcmr is the prefix for my uh, record and or we can say simple reservation res and how many digits a uh, number of digits you want to uh, get do you want to display in your auto number you can pr properly configure your auto number here so this is how it it is giving a preview how it will look like so if i want to give like nine numbers so it will it will take the uh, uh, it will look like this with the nine digits at the end uh, post fixed uh, after res and also we can see the value here if you want to start your number with zero so it will start with 000 and or otherwise if you want to start with 1000 it was like by default so it, it depends upon you how you want to configure it and you can create your uh, field so i have defined my name as my reservation id so i now i will move with the different type of fields which i want to create in reservation table so my, my next field is the travel date so which will be of type data on uh, date time so here you can define whether you want to keep your field as a recommended optional or required optional means if you if you'll not enter the value then also you will be able to create your record required means that's a mandatory for your record to be created so if you will not enter that field you will not be able to create your record recommended uh, means it comes up with the plus sign on the field uh, which means it is good to have if you will provide this value it would be good but even if you will not provide it will it will not stop you to create the record so these are the uh, required types uh, for the field um, there is one flag called searchable on on the field so searchable means if you will click that so um, you you will be able to search your records based on the value of this field but if you will not make it like if you will uncheck this, so it um, your data will not be searchable based on the value which, which is there in this field. So it depends like if you want to make it searchable or not. Calculated or role of field we can add here if we want this field to be auto calculated based on some uh, formula or condition. So we can set up it here. Uh, we'll see like which field we want to create as a calculated field. And here you can add the description like for which you, you want to use this field. So we'll say travel date yeah. is done. So the next field I want to create as passenger. So passenger, as I've already explained, I will be considering the uh, contact, uh, the out of the box contact table as passenger. So we gonna create a relation between the contact table and the um, reservation table. So, uh, so what type of field we have to select to make a relationship? That's a lookup field. So lookup field always, uh, it, it gives a lookup to the contact table. Uh, it will give a lookup uh, on, for the contact table on the reservation record so once we'll open the form once we'll come there and we'll see so the data type will be lookup and what table i want to uh, relate with we have to give that table name so that's contact okay and i want to make this field as required now because uh, without contact there is no point of making a reservation right so i'll just make it required uh, the other one i want to create the cruise like which cruise that passenger wants to make a booking so i'll create it as a lookup again for the cruise table the cruise table okay and i'll make this as also required 
because I need it for my reservation. Okay, so the next type of field we can see uh, the choice type. So I will say choice, which can be a drop down, and I'll say deal type available for that particular reservation. So the choice. So there are two options now. Uh, we can create the uh, local option set or the global option set. So the difference between the local option set is the local option set is all only or only available for your particular table. But if we'll create the global choice, uh, so we can utilize the same choice option set to uh, among the different tables. So the same, just like the uh, if we if we want any uh, drop down list which is a, uh, which we want on account or contact or any other table, so we prefer to create a new uh, choice here, so which will be centralized and can be used by different tables in the data wars. So I will make new as field type and I'll add the value of the option set as basic, let's say, and the new one as premium. Okay, save. So as soon as you create it, your choice will get create and you can select that what this will give you the list of it. You can edit it anytime. And if you want to set the default value of it, you can set. If you don't want, you can skip it. That totally depends. Okay. So the next one, I'll be creating the booking amount. So the booking amount can be of type currency because that's the amount. Um, and that is also the required one. I'll go. Okay, and uh, so the next one, I want to keep number of passengers so because I want to make use of the calculated field. So I'll tell this one as whole number and it depends. It's required optional. I'll just go with optional. The next field I want to create uh, as total amount because uh, total amount will depend on the number of passengers traveling for that reservation. So I want to set up the total amount as a calculated field. So that uh, I want to set as a calculated. Saving a table, give me a minute. It takes a while sometime. Okay. So we go. So here, so the total amount I have created as um the currency field. So the the cal open calculation will give you the ability to set the calculation up. So what I want to do is I just I'm not putting any condition there. I just want my uh, the booking amount into number of passengers. Number of passengers. Sorry, I misspelled the passenger there. So if we can give the formula whatever you want to put in the calculated field, it can be a complex one, it can be a simple one. So here the total amount for my reservation would be the booking amount of one ticket per, uh, into the number of passengers. So I'm setting up my um, total amount as uh, the multiplication of both the fields. So this is how you can set up the calculated fields with any formula you need as per your requirement. And I'll say save and close. This is done. The one more type I want to show here is the uh, the multiple choice. So Dataverse provides you uh, one type, which is uh, I like. I really like it. This is multiple choice one. Uh, so it, this also defines the. Uh, this also includes or defines the choices, choice type, or you can select any drop down list, but it gives you ability to do the multi select within the field. So I'll have one field, say additional services, and the type will be 
choices not the choice if you remember uh, last time i used the choice so this time i'll be using choices and i can say i want to create a new one with additional services and the type i can say meals or you want to take entertainment during your reservation or wheelchair assistant or wi-fi so you can select any one of them or all of them based on the customer's requirement so this is a multiple choice one and i'll say done so i'm pretty much done with all my fields so um because uh, we don't have much time, so I'll not go into the business rules creating those, but we can uh, definitely set up the new business rules uh, where you can define like uh, you cannot have uh, the passengers more than five or 10 on one ticket, any any type of validation we can apply here. Uh, oh, one more thing uh, I think I missed and I want to show you is the status. So we can have a new field here saying where you can define the status of that particular reservation. But uh, Dataverse comes up with uh, the out of the box status fields called status and status reason. So we, uh, we can utilize those uh, status. Uh, we can customize or configure the uh, out of the box fields as well. So the status reason uh, by default, it will have active and inactive um, uh, two types of uh, status is there on the record, active or inactive, but we can uh, customize and edit the choices of these uh, saying we can, we don't want active or inactive and we, we just can rename it saying confirmed or uh, pending or cancelled. Uh, so we can do and uh, we can do that here in the out of the box fields or you can have a new field altogether. So it totally depends um based on those statuses we can create views uh like if we want to just see the confirmed ticket so we can create a view or we can uh you know uh customize the existing views so here if you can see this is the filter where we can edit the filter saying the where status uh or where we can say status is equals to confirmed or you can add any new row and can say where travel date is equals to last month so we can create different different views based on different conditions so we can add filters here okay going back to the forms okay so here uh, we will uh, now we have all the required fields in our table so we will be creating the um the form based on those fields so here in general if you can see uh this provides you the the layout of the uh, out of the box form so we uh, what we will do uh, we will just rename this one because we have created name as a auto uh, auto generated field so we will call it reservation id instead of name okay uh, and we can uh, just drag and drop or uh, uh, create the new fields using um, the buttons on the top, we can say we want to add a new form field where I want to put my cruise here and my con passenger, I can say passenger cruise and what's my travel date. So, uh, what's my deal type. So you, you can uh, uh, lay out, change the layout of this based on the sections and the tabs and the different, there are different layouts provided, but I'm just going with the simple one because we don't uh, just to respect the time. I'll just go with the simple layout. Uh, so deal type and number of passengers. And I'll say the booking amount, sorry, the booking. Booking amount and the total amount. Total amount is already and additional services, I would say. 
that's it we have created so we have put all the fields over here i'll put in the we'll save it I'll OK, so uh, we have saved our form. Uh, the one important thing which we have to take care of while implementing the data was is the publish. So if we will not publish our changes, it will not reflect on the main portal uh, and, uh, from the user interface. So always whenever we save anything, any customization, we have to publish it. So that's the important one here. So it takes a while to publish the things. And now we can. Go again. Uh, sorry, so here in header, I want to add the status just to say if you will put the. If you uh, will be having the different statuses, we can see here. So our form is almost complete now. Um, OK, so it's done. Uh, so now I'll uh, go back to my slide. Uh, so the tables are ready. Now we will move towards a model driven app creation. So before we will go there, I just want to know like if we have any question till here. Hey, Preeti, uh, it's going really great. We see a lot of appreciation for you. So I think it's always good to learn by example and the example which you have taken of cruise reservation is is something we all can relate to. So a very good example which you have picked. Um, there's no specific question, but guys, if you guys, if anyone wants to unmute and ask any any question around creation of tables, relations, data types, we have seen how Preeti has shown we can use things. I, I was able to relate to finance and operations where we we configure number sequences and here we can just define while adding the field. And there were things like choices which we have like enum. So I was able to relate a bit of it. But if anyone wants to unmute and say something, feel free to do that. Yeah, of course. Yes. Yeah, this idea. Yeah. Thanks, Rajesh and Priti. I have a question like like number sequence. We can go and edit and you know if it is exceed the number sequence, we can update there. Uh, is this uh, field configurations are edi editable later? Yeah, they are, but if you will edit those later, it will, uh, you know, uh, reset the number sequence again. So once you have defined the number sequence and like if you have def def uh, defined, it should be of nine characters after your prefix. Uh, so, uh, so your number sequence will start from the number you have seeded in. Uh, and if on later stage you have like multiple records in your system and you reset the value, so it uh, means if you change the values of that particular field, it will reset uh, the number sequence. Okay, does it going to affect the existing data or how, how it is? No, it won't. Okay, okay. Thank you so much. That, that answers my question. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Ayer. All right. Uh, yeah, I think uh, Preeti, we can go ahead if yeah, there is okay. any more question. OK, let's go ahead. We'll take more questions towards the end. If you have any questions, feel free to put it in the chat window, guys. Thank you. OK, uh, so now coming back to my solution. Um, so uh, till now we have seen we have created uh, the tables. Uh, the table name was Cruise and the other table we have created the reservation here you can see the list of all the components but here you can see the types type of component which we created so this gives you the full wholesome list of the all the components which are part of your customization but these as i have explained earlier this is the list where you can see the individual category of the table so we have utilized or customized or created the relation between these tables so they are part of the table category we have created two choices one is deal type one is additional services so if you want to change the values coming on the later on you can update or add the new values over here so each category defines the particular um, uh, particular component type so if you want to create the power automates you can go to the cloud flows and create your new power automates processes defines the different workflows or the business rules 
which I uh, just uh, gave an overview of earlier and uh, while going through uh, the different components. So here we have all, our, all other categories where, which you can just directly click and create the particular type of category. Um, coming on the model driven app, there are two ways of creating it. So you can see here all the apps and can create it from this uh, UI uh, where it gives you ability to create or directly select which um, type of app you want to create or we can create from the solution also where, where I was doing my customization. So I'll take that route. But before going there, I just want to give a very high um, um, overview on a high level overview on the type of the apps available in Dataverse. So we can see like there are Canvas apps, model driven apps and portal. So portal, uh, I think uh, most of us are aware of it because portal is nothing but, uh, uh, you know, that it gives the ability to the users who are non-licensed, uh, non-dynamics licensed, I would say, because uh, we, when, uh, li uh, if we don't want to give access to one kind of audience uh, uh, for the data wars or for the, dan let's say the Dynamics 365 CE, I don't want everybody to access my CE directly, but I still want them to give the access of the data so I can just give them a portal so that they can have their own login and they can access, they can give their feedbacks. We can create a customer portal, we can create a supplier portal, or we can create any feedback portal where we just want to get the feedback for the sales we are doing or anything. So those portals are very useful, low code. Uh, we can say uh, uh, these are very powerful and very low and no code kind of stuff where we can create uh, the UI for the customers where who does not have the Dynamics license. Um, so earlier we used to do, if you remember the ASPX uh, websites, so those were very time consuming. So it's very quick here. If we have a data was set up, we can just, uh, you know, configure the portal on top of that and can directly create uh, the forms which are no code and can give access and the user interface to the mm -hmm. to uh, to those customers. So mainly coming to the canvas and the model driven app, the main difference between the canvas and the model driven app is their database. So model driven app can only be built on the data world, so it cannot use any other data store or the database. Whereas canvas where it, it names itself defines, it's a canvas like a free canvas where you can put all your uh, controls and you can design your app in in your own way and can give the connections uh, for to the different data stores um, and uh, that can be built on uh, which can access the data from the different different uh, sources so that way that's where the canvas app is more powerful uh, because it can access and can interact with various data sources uh, the other difference is the layout so model driven app has a very specific structured layout. So you just have to fit in your tables in that particular structure. The dashboards and everything will come in that structure. You can't change the layout, but Canvas app is just uh, just like a free app, a uh, free Canvas so where you can design in your own way. Um, there is one more thing which uh, it, it, it is related to the logical implementation. So in model driven app, uh, you can uh, the logical implementation can be done using the plugins and the actions, workflows, cloud flows, anything. But in Canvas app, you can only use the Excel driven formulas or some tricky con uh, conditions. So that's a basic difference between Canvas and model driven app. So today we're going to create the model driven app where we will expose those tables which we just have created and we'll see like how we can do the data import and how we can use or create the transactional data uh, from the model driven app UI. So I'll go back to my solution and we'll open the same solution which I have created. And here you can uh, do new, um, new app as a model driven app, or I can go to the ca proper category of model driven app and can say, create a new model driven app for me. And I'm gonna use classic app designer today for it. So here I'll give uh, the name as mix uh, cruise management. It's a big name. I'll just uh, I'll just say D Lab. D Lab cruise management, 
And uh, here are a couple of options. Like if I'll be creating the new app from outside the solution, so I might have used uh, this uh, put flag saying use my existing solution to in, uh, include this app too. Uh, but because I'm doing it from my solution already, so I'm just uh, skipping everything and creating my app directly. So as soon as you create an app, this is the view. This is the layout you get. This is uh, where you can set up your model driven app. So here uh, we, we, we're going to set the sitemap of the model driven app uh, and uh, what are the dashboards we want to include or if you want to include what entities will be the part of those model driven app. Everything comes up here. So before going here, I'll just uh, want to show you like how model driven app looks like so that we can relate like what component will be built using which feature so if i'll just open any maybe customer service hub this is one of the model driven apps so i think everybody knows how model driven app looks like if if you got a chance to give a look ever so this is like how model driven app looks like so here is the name of the model driven app which environment you are in and here are a couple of options to do the advanced filter this is purely related to data was how you can do the filter on your tables i'll i'll see like if i'll get a chance i'll take you through or take you all through this but on the left side if you can see these are the areas where you can define your dashboards your activities so this is one of the area where you can see all your accounts, your contacts, and these all are the entities which you want to see um, on your MDA, the model driven app. And these are the different areas where you can, uh, you know, just configure your app based on your uh, requirement. So where if you want to put scheduling related entities one and, and the setting related or the master data related uh, entities if you want to put in one section. So you can have, uh, you can create different areas here. So if you see there are three components involved. One is the area, the main area like servicing area and the other is the group uh, which is static uh, where you can put all your, uh, your subgroups or the stables under that particular group. So if I'll come back to my designer, this is the sitemap which decides like how your uh, model driven app gonna look like. So that area is the one which you have seen as a services. So I will define the name of this area as a sales or I would say uh, booking, ticket booking, whatever name you want to give, you can give and you can place the icons as well if available. Uh, and the, new group i want to create two groups here one is customer uh, where i will add my entity which is passenger passenger is nothing but if you remember that's a contact but i don't want a user to expose like i'm using a contact one so i want to name it as passenger so you can still use the out of the box entity or any entity with its own name but you can anytime you know uh, override the name of this particular table on the model driven app. So model driven app will always give you this name, whatever you will give in title. If you will not give anything, it will automatically take the entity name, but it gives you ability to update the name here. So I'll add one more group where, where I will say this one is a reservation or booking or your transactional data and where I will add my reservation. Reservation table here. Uh, and I will add one more area called settings where I want to keep my master data. So this one I can say reference data or the master data and I'll create a state in sub entity called cruise. Cruise and I'll save it. So the very important feature of data was again, which I've explained that's a publish. If you'll not publish anything, uh, nothing will come up on the main UI. So once it is done, I'll just save and close it and I if you can see whatever I, the entities I have included in my sitemap, it will automatically come over here. 
uh, and here we can control uh, like the uh, components what we want to display on the model driven app just like the forms of the contact if you can see these many forms are uh, comes up with the contact out of the box but i do i don't want to display all of them on the model driven app i don't want them to give access so i just want to uh, show the main contact form or you can select like what what information form which form you want to show on your model driven app um, and uh, you can uncheck all other if you don't want to show them so the quick create also i will just select those so this is the structure where uh, where you can control what all views you want to show if you don't want to show all of them you can just select those which uh, which you can just unselect which you don't want to show so it depends on the charts and the dashboards if you have created for your table you can control from here uh, the one thing which i want to highlight here it may be different for finops guys uh, like here we are not designing the forms here we are just controlling uh, you know the exposure of the forms and the views and the charts it's it's not like we are creating anything we have already created and designed our forms uh, when we created the table uh, here we are just controlling the access of the forms which we want to display or the views what we want to display for those particular tables so that's how you can manage your model driven app i'm gonna save it and publish it so once it is published it should be available on your dataverse environment if i just go back to my dataverse environment and if you click on apps you will be able to see dlab cruise management is here and if i'll come here you will be able to see all your contacts. If you have any, it will they will get listed here. So I don't have data in my uh, trial um, instance for now. So I just have one record here. Uh, so if uh, uh, you can see the model driven app, how it is looking, my passenger is here, my reservation is here. And if I change the area, you can see your cruise is here. So just uh, to quickly demo the import thing, I will I, I can show you there is a you can directly import your data from here, like import from Excel or import from CSV. I'll just go with import from CSV and I will select my CSV file um, like cruise CSV, which has like two or three uh, cruise names. So as um, as you just proceed in this process, it will uh, give you uh, the ability to review your mapping and you can uh, map the fields which you have in your uh, Excel or the CSV against the fields you have in your Dataverse. And once you map it correctly, like if you have more than one, I just have one luckily, so it will be quick and you can finish your import. So once your import is done, you will be able to see your data here. It takes a while uh, because uh, the, it's happening in background. Oh, you can see. So our data is here. So we have three cruises here, celebrity cruises, princess cruises, rural Caribbean. So that's how we can import data in Dataverse. That's very simple. You can use any. So there is one more way you can have go, go with the advanced settings and we have the data management thing, but it is, it is all it's all the same like we don't have to go in that detail here we can do imports we can see all the imports here but this is a very quicker one which you can do from the table itself in the data was okay so coming back to our main uh, table reservation oh i've not set up the views we can do like if if time will permit then we can just uh, see like how we can set up the view over here but now just quickly see how our form looks looks like which we have created so our reservation passenger uh, John Smith, let's say my cruise, he wants to travel in Princess Cruise and his travel date is 30th of uh, 30th of September, 8 a.m. So booking amount is $200, let's say. And I think five will be five are traveling there and additional services. If you can see, I, they want to take meals, entertainment, etc. So this is like uh, uh, the multiple choice one. And I can show the deal type also. It was a basic because I have selected the default value there, but you can anyways select the different value if you want. So once it is done, I'll say save. 
uh, reservation ID. I forgot to uh, forgot to make it like uh, non mandatory. I'll just give something, but it will. I'm sorry, I forgot to. I had to make it. Uh, I had to make it non mandatory. I'll just quickly do that. One minute reservation. So I'll just go and say reservation ID. So name. Uh, optional. Done. I'll refresh it and I'll create a new record. One minute. Let me say for John Smith. Now this time he'll be traveling in Royal Caribbean. Uh, and I'll say booking amount 200 and four people and additional services, any one of it. And if I'll just save this one. So if you can see the auto auto calculated field, it is calculating my uh, total amount of the reservation, like 200 into four, and it has given me the reservation ID as well. So usually we keep this field as disabled. Uh, sorry, because of the time I forgot to keep this as uh, the. But you can anytime make your field uh, disabled on the form. Um, and this is how uh, the different type of fields looks like. I can quickly show how to set up a view. So if I want to show uh, all the uh, required fields on the view, what you can do is you can just add it from here. So I want to uh, show the booking amount and you can just drag and drop here and can uh, show your additional services and uh, I want to show the cruise I'm traveling in and the deal type on anything. Uh, the main one is total amount. So I can just drag and drop my fields to set up the views here. And this, if I'll just save it and publish it, and if I'll go back to my model driven app, let it get published in a while. And if I'll go back to my model driven app and I'll refresh my browser and we'll go to reservations. So you will be able to see your view, how it looks like. So here you can see this is the name. This is a booking entered in what what fields you want to expose. You can expose on your views and here you can see all your views what are available and you can create new views based on the statuses and all. Um, so that is it. That is I, I think I'm done from my side. Uh, if you have any question, query, uh, you all are welcome. That is it how like model driven app looks like. A very simple one. <laughs> Thank you guys. So over to you, Rachel. Thanks, Preeti. Uh, we were actually thinking of publishing it on App Source and make some money out of it. <laughs> Well, this was really good demonstration, uh, especially uh, the the way you have explained with the uh, with the real time example, and we all were able to relate to what we do in finance and operations. So thank you for that, Priti. Uh, do guys, do you have any questions, or if anyone wants to open up and say something to Priti, and then I'll move on to the last section of the uh, yeah. event today. Uh, okay, so I'll just share my screen. Just a minute. A lot of appreciations for you, Preeti, in the chat window. And uh, great job there. I really liked your dedication uh, about troubleshooting while demoing. I know it's not easy task, and that shows your level of expertise. Okay, so guys, what we have seen today is that uh, we have talked about what is platform convergence. Uh, we, we understand what is it, what data works as a platform is, and how we can create different data, you know, different tables, how we can create data types, table relations, calculative fields um, in data verse. Uh, we have seen how we can create model driven apps. Also pretty explained on the difference between the three type of apps, uh, which I also learned today. So thanks pretty for that. 
And I hope uh, with this, we are now geared up for next sessions because in the next sessions, we are going to talk about how dual write or platform convergence features work work and how the data comes into Dataverse. And we have seen how, how easy it was to create this app and the UI and the user interface to design these apps are, are so attractive. So that was really nice. All right, so there was just one question, Preeti, I'll just take two. There was a question from Ravi that, you remember when you showed us the business rules when you were talking about business rules? Can we also write code snippets to write our business rules or we only have to live with the configuration options? There? No, business rules is totally configuration. Uh, uh, you have the alternative if you want to write any complex business rule which is not available to configure in the data verse. So we can write JavaScripts anytime and we can just uh, you know uh, configure that JavaScript to, on the form to make the validation. Okay. Okay. Thank you for that. So we'll just move ahead. Uh, so guys, what's next? So next session is on 2nd of October, which is the second uh, second session in this series. And there we will have Tim Shaw from Microsoft who will be talking about platform convergence roadmap. And uh, we will hear from Microsoft's perspective what they think about this feature. And we will have Fazal Farid uh, uh, from Barhead who will be giving us some demos and I will also be participating in that session. So keep supporting us, keep uh, registering for these sessions. We have shared the links to register in our user groups. Uh, if you are not able to register, feel free to drop me an email. I have published my email address in the chat window, or you can drop me a mail at rachit.garg at d365ugindia.com. So with that, uh, we are pretty much done. We really appreciate you all taking our time on the weekend and joining us. So yeah, I would like to thank everyone. I will stop recording or if someone wants to open up and say something, please go ahead. Oh, hello. Yeah. Oh, hi, Rachit. I'm Kunal here. I just have a small query from Preeti. Uh, Preeti, uh, you showed up data that came on Power Apps and that was with having a right access that because I could see a new and delete button on the top of it. So can we make it just a read only access? Is it possible? Because uh, in one of my POCs, I'm working on fetching data from SQL Server, but that's just for the analysis purpose. I don't want to change that data or modify that data just for viewing it. So can we make that uh, tables into data words just having read only access? Um, yeah, uh, definitely, but that can be done only uh, using the security roles. So you can configure uh, the security roles in the system and uh, can give the access for that table to the particular rules. So what you can do is uh, we, we have a different type of privileges in uh, database, read privilege, write privilege, or append to, append privilege, so we, or create privilege even. So delete also. So if that's or that or those are the privileges available for on each table in the data world. So what you can do is you can create a one role and can assign that particular role to that user to whom you don't want to access or uh, you don't want to give the create or edit access for that record and you can just give them read only access so they will only be able to read the data they will not be able to edit or delete it okay so in that case the new and delete buttons on the top of that form would they be disabled go. yeah they will be uh, invisible they will go uh, they will not be visible on the return okay okay thank you Preeti. thank you all right guys we are on time so thanks a lot everyone and big thanks to Preeti. kudos to you that was a very good demo thank you for training us on dataverse all right guys have a great weekend yeah. you too thank you thank you rachit Preeti. Preeti was saying something no <laughs> thanks thanks all okay. have a good day thanks thank you guys Thank you guys. Thanks to you, Rachit, for organizing this. No problem. I learned a lot. <laughs> so that's good. All right, I'll then close the bridge and I'll stop the recording. <laughs>